What's going on everyone? I hope you're having an awesome day so far, and welcome back to another episode of Chuck's Customs. As you've probably noticed, I've had to take a bit of a hiatus from uploading here to YouTube. Uh, just to get it out there, nothing's wrong, I'm still very much alive. I've just been really busy lately between work, home, and I'm trying to start my own business. And unfortunately, YouTube has had to take a bit of a back seat to all of that. I still plan on getting, you know, back into the groove of uploading somewhat regularly, but just know that right now life is kind of hectic, so I'm going to upload whenever I can. With all of that being said, let's not waste any time and dive right into what today's episode is all about. So if you follow me on Instagram, at Chuck's Customs, you probably would have seen that back in late January, Bessie's transmission decided to give me a big old middle finger and say, I quit. And ever since then, Bessie has been sitting in my driveway. And I gotta say, I didn't think it was possible, but Bessie looks even more tired than she ever has before. It's pretty sad. It's, uh, it's starting to look bad. I'm surprised the neighbors aren't complaining yet. So, let me show you how today we're going to start working on beautifying Bessie. So, as you can see behind me, I have two absolutely tasty square body doors. And, believe it or not, I actually got these out of the scrapyard for 150 bucks. Um, they've got a little bit of rust on them, but not a whole lot. So a big part of me definitely wants to say, eh, just put them on the truck the way that they are. It'll be fine. But at the same time, I really want to restore Bessie to look like it belongs in a car show. Like just something completely badass. Long, black truck, beautiful interior, nice clean engine bay. Right now it looks like a rat rod. But this is going to be the key to us making her look crispy. We're going to take these into the garage one at a time and just restore the little things that need to be brought back to life. Like as you can see on this one, there's a little bit of rust right here, a little bit down here, some down there, and the, the other door looks about the same. For the most part, they're extremely clean. From what I can tell, it looks like original paint. It's got the original trim on it. I'm absolutely amazed that these windows are in such good condition. They're, they're just perfect. Usually these are always rusted out. The track is always rusted out and just gone, but these are perfect. They're immaculate on that one too. And they have tinted glass inside. They roll up, but I don't have the cranks or the panels, but that's fine. We can get that stuff later. In the meantime, I just want to get these doors fixed up, eliminate all the rust, get them primed and ready for paint, then we can put them on the truck, paint the truck all in one shot, it'll look beautiful. So let's get one of these into the garage and get to work. Now that it's on the operating table, we see a little bit better of what it needs to be repaired. Um, and I'm still just absolutely amazed at the condition that these doors are in. To the person who scrapped this square body Chevy, if you ever even think about scrapping a square body that clean ever again, please, please give me a call because I would, I would love to take it off your hands from you. And uh, I'll give you more than the scrapyard would. So, just saying. So what we'll do with stuff like this is we'll just sand it down, get all the paint away from it, and then we'll use some Osfo to make sure that the rust doesn't come back and make sure that we get rid of all of it. And then from that point, we can just prime it and work it into the rest of the paint. This is the type of stuff that we're going to have to possibly cut into. I don't know, we're gonna have to sand it down first to see how extensive it really is. You can see the previous owner used a can of spray paint to try to cover it at one point, and it just didn't really do a good job. So 
This, we're going to have to remove all the paint from around it. See how deep it actually is. It looks like it started to go through there. Cut it out if we need to. Weld a new piece in. Good to go. And finally, areas like this, we're really going to have to trim quite a bit back. Get rid of all of these holes, all of the bad surfaces. We're pretty much going to have to rebuild this whole corner right here. And yeah, it shouldn't be too hard, guys. Bodywork is a lot easier than people make it out to be. I, I promise you. I don't have any formal training in bodywork. No one really taught me much about it. I just kind of watched a couple videos and tried it. And it turns out I'm not half bad at it. I'm sure you could be too. It's just a matter of cutting out what shouldn't be there or sanding away what shouldn't be there, welding new stuff in as clean as possible, and then for the little stuff that you can't get with a welder, you just use a little bit of body filler to smooth it out, prime it, paint it, you're done. Guys, it's super easy, and I'm about to show you right now. Let's get to work. Holy crap, guys. So that actually sanded out a lot better than I thought it would. This is completely gone. Uh, that big patch that was right here, all that's left of that is this focus. This little bit of pitting right here, and when you run your finger over it, you can't even really feel it. So that kind of stuff, I'm just going to hit with a tiny bit of Osfo just to make sure that that doesn't turn back into something. But otherwise... We'll hit this with a little bit of primer, and we're ready to go as far as this stuff. All right, now let's move on to little stuff like this and this, and then eventually we can make our way to that. Now that's a bit more along the lines of what I was expecting. From the painted surface, it looked like maybe it was a similar story to what we just did, where it was just on the surface and could be sanded away, but now I can see there's some pretty serious pitting. And as much as I'd like to say, eh, just hit it with some Osfo and body filler and paint it, call it a day, if it's that deep, you know it's on the inside as well. So it's looking like we're going to have to cut this section out and just weld a new piece in, blend it, call it a day. This one is going to be the same story. Without even sanding it, you can already see it's clearly too far gone to try to just do a surface repair. So, as well as that one and this one, they're both going to be getting cut out, shape some new metal, weld it in there, sand it, make it look pretty. <laughs> You know, I know I can fix it, but it always freaks me out when I cut into a door like this. Just, it's so clean. I should just leave it alone, but I can't. I can't. I have to fix that. And you can actually see where this was kind of warped. Uh, it starts to curve up, but not that drastically, so that we can actually fix in the meantime while the metal's off. We can bend up some new stuff, weld it in place, We'll be good to go, people. Before I do that, 
quick change of plans. The metal that I was going to use for this little project right here, I thought it would be alright, and it, it probably would be fine, but I don't just want fine. This is going to be my forever truck. I want to restore it the right way. So, it's kind of thin compared to the piece that I just cut off, so I'm not going to use this steel. Tomorrow I'm going to go out, pick up some slightly thicker stuff to match the thickness of this. Maybe even go a little bit thicker, I don't know. Um, but that stuff, I know if I tried to weld it, it's just, it's going to burn through and it's going to warp and it's not going to be a fun day. So, yeah, I'm going to go get the right stuff tomorrow, come back, keep working on the door. I'll see you in a few seconds. Oh, yeah. Much better. That'll do just fine. Nice 22 gauge. Matches the thickness perfectly. Nice. say I've done better transitions than that. Uh, the one thing I'm happy about though is this corner is nice and smooth. Uh, this one needs a little bit of body fill. You can see where it's got kind of a low spot right there in it. That's no issue. This, uh, I don't really know what happened here. Obviously the whole plate is a more of a low spot, but again, that's that's what body fillers for is that those little imperfections that you just didn't quite get right and then same with this this whole weld ended up turning into a little bit of a divot but that's all right let's get some body fill on it make it look pretty prime it and then move on to this one I think I can easily say that I'm fairly pleased with that. There's a couple low spots, like a little tiny one right here, a little tiny one right here, and this is just a straight up divot. That I'm not going to worry about yet. Uh, I'm probably going to have to save that one for the next episode because I'm realizing now that this is like all pinched and crimped right here from years and years of abuse. It's not even rounded anymore. It's just 
It's like someone just pinched it. All the way up to about here. And then it turns back into a nice radius. So when it comes time to fix this corner, we're going to end up cutting all the way back to here. Getting this whole strip out of here to bring that radius back. And then we can transition down into this whole thing. But that'll be for the next episode because that's going to be a lot. In this episode, we're just going to focus on this one. And we have this one left to do. So I'm not going to mix up a whole other batch of Bondo for just those two little low spots. Uh, instead, we'll fix this one real quick. And then when we're going to Bondo that one up, we can fix these little low spots at that point. So on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give it about an 8. Mainly because it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was when we started. Now don't freak out, this isn't like the absolute final coat of primer. This still needs to be sanded, primed again, but before I even do that, there's still a few little tiny low spots that need to be touched up. And that's what this coat of primer was meant for, to help me find any little imperfections that I couldn't see without it being all one color. And before that even, there's still a lot left to do on this door before it's ready for anything like that. But that's gonna have to wait for the next episode because that's where we're wrapping this one up. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and show that thumbs up button some love. If you didn't like what you saw, or you have suggestions or comments or questions, let me know in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you guys. And as always, if you want to see what happens next, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. So, oh gosh. So everyone, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time on another episode of Chuck's Customs.